So recently I was doing a one-to-one -one consultation for which the link will be in the description box of this video. And the person asked me, is getting a sponsored job a easy or a difficult task in the UK? But first of all, by sponsored job, I mean, so if you call a student visa for your master's degree or BSA degree, after finishing your degree, after like, after a student visa, you need to get a particular job, right? In order to get that job, you need a worker visa here in the UK so that you've got the right to work and stay in the UK. And that worker visa is like, a, it's called skilled worker visa. And before it was used to call tier two worker visa, right? So essentially you need this kind of sponsorship from the company where they can give you the skilled worker visa essentially. And like, this is what I mean by having a sponsored job, right? So, and that's like what the, the person was asking me is getting a sponsored job easy or a difficult task here in the UK. And I think it's quite natural to think that if you call local candidates, you know, who are here in the UK who don't need a visa sponsorship and when they apply for a specific employer, they're going to get a preference because you're the international candidates and you need a visa sponsorship. But I think like this is not true. This, this like in my personal opinion, this might not be true uh, because I think there is more of the information which we need to dissect and, and think about. By this, what I mean is that if it is a local candidate, first of all, what is the profile of that local candidate? By this I mean is uh, that local candidate, first of all, he has always studied here in the UK, which is his undergraduate degree, the BSc degree he has done here in the UK. By which I mean that he has got the degree, which has got more of research-based experience. Whereas in the India or like BSc degrees in the India, I mean, they're very good colleges. I know that they are IITs, but it's very hard to get into the IITs. And the local colleges and the local kind of the universities aren't of that great standard. And most of the emphasis is on the theoretical learning or otherwise, the labs, the, the, the techniques which they use are quite conventional, quite traditional. For example, I was seeing one of my friends, so I, I think he's doing BSc in science and they had chemistry and he was doing experiment in the lab and was seeing that he was still using a Bunsen flame in the lab, in the laboratory. So which is quite very traditional way of doing uh, chemistry. Right now we've got, we've got like various different techniques to, you know, do our reactions in the chemistry essentially. Okay, the point is that the local candidate has got more of research-based degree. That's the way it's being taught here in the UK. The second, the projects which he worked is very much relevant because here every single year the degree gets updated with all the new 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 new, new things the most of the research articles which are being published that's how the professor kind of fine-tune their particular course as well so which is again really nice way of teaching here in the uk so he has got that advantage over international candidates and the second point which is really important is the work experience now i personally have done my undergraduate degree here in the uk so i know like what my classmates used to do and a lot of them used to do their summer internships so after the first year of their degree they've got some summer break for about three to four months and a lot of them like i won't say a lot of them but like but they were they were like plenty plenty of them who used to do this summer internships because like you know they want to go for holidays and when they do summer internship they get a paid holiday from the company and essentially they get paid holiday by which they can travel around and they're being paid and plus they get the work experience so it's really really nice for them to to do their summer internships and a lot of them they do like one two three summer internship if them go to placement year they also do one year of placement so so, you know the main point is that they've also got a work experience there are two things first of all they've got a uk based degree the second point is that they've got work experience so like that's my particular reasoning that that's why these candidates are being preferred as compared to an international candidate who has simply done his done his bsc degree in india he doesn't has any work experience and he's straight away come here for a master's degree and after that you know, it can be a bit of a trouble to get that visa sponsorship because you don't have that work experience and the teaching is a bit traditional and a bit conventional and a bit theoretical. So yeah, so like this was my very first point in this video. The next point which I want to make in this video is regarding your CV and the cover letter. Now let's say if you've got a profile that you did your BSc degree from India, which was really research based from a very good institution, very good university. And after that, you had some work experience as well. Then you went for your master's degree. In the master's degree here in the UK, you got distinction, right? Now this is very good profile here but i've seen like like people with this kind of profile still not being able to even get the interview in that particular company where they've applied to and when i talk in this one-to-one -one consultations i ask that my next question immediately is please can you show me your cv and the cover letter and it's just like a bit shocking and a bit annoying to see that you know having such a good profile like but this cv and the cover letter doesn't kind of justify that because the cv and the cover letter is not in the uk format style it has got grammatical errors is causing spelling errors and i mean like there is for example if you call a bullet point you like you know you'll put full stop in the very first bullet point the second bullet point they'll miss a full stop third point again full stop full stop again message so like you know that there, there isn't that kind of consistency and like here 
the UK employers, uh, you know, like like I mean, like you have to have detail to action for your particular CV in the cover letter, and the UK employer they they kind of notice each and every single thing, like like the way you organize your CV, is it in UK format style, the spelling mistake, the grammatical errors, and everything. So the main point over here is that make sure your CV and the cover letter is in the best possible shape before you even start applying for any of the companies. And another another point is that make sure like once you have made your CV, you might be thinking it's I mean like this is the world's best CV. But like trust me, like it's happened with me, it's my own personal experience that when I first of all made the CV, I thought, you know, there aren't any mistakes. Then I showed it to my professor that, you know, she she had like too many mistakes and the errors which were in my particular CV. And then I acted upon them. And again, I sent to my professor. Again, she had, you know, pointed again some mistakes. So I mean, like this is kind of an ongoing process and make sure that you show your CV to multiple people. And moreover, personally for me, you can take my help over here. I do one-to-one -one consultations where basically you can set me your CV draft. After that, I'll be editing it. I'll be checking all this grammar, the spelling, making it in the UK format style, uh, making sure the sentences are in the right particular uh, grammatical sense, is, is making sense or not. All skills are being encapsulated in your CV cover letter. I'll make sure of all these things. So you can take my service. The link will be in the description box of this video. And I do this alongside an HR. So this is again a validation for you that, well, you know, your CV is going to be, be shown to the HR in the very first place and she'll be also giving the feedback. So like this is a win-win situation for you. So the main essential two points are in this video in order to get a sponsored job. The very first point is for your work experience. You need to gather work experience. The second point is that make sure your CV and the cover letter is in the best shape possible. And it has been seen by the multiple people so that they have given you the feedback and you've acted upon that particular feedback. So before I end this video, I would really like to thank Amber Surins who have kindly sponsored this video. So you send a marketplace for all the accommodation needs. So if you're looking for accommodation anywhere in the UK, London, Glasgow, for Newcastle anywhere make sure you go to their website link will be in the description box of this video or so you go to their website just filter down the name where you want to have that accommodation where you want to find the accommodation and it'll be showing you all that accommodations which are available in that particular location and you can essentially filter out based upon the pricing you know if you want all the Indian friends if you want multicultural if you want only girls only boys go ahead everything will be on the ambassador website they will be having different filters to sort that out and also there are very good offers available for the students so so make sure that you check out Ember students and make sure to book your accommodation as soon as possible. So with this, I hope this video was informative. I'll see you in my next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.